What's up, guys? It is the Sound Alchemist here with Gersh One, and we are bringing you another episode of For the Greater. Now, this episode is super special because it's exactly the same as always. <laughs> Happy Monday to you guys. Uh, so, we're gonna take the questions you guys left off in the last Monday video. So, let's get started with Kano Carey. If you were to create a new faction or race for 40k, what would it be? Now, we kind of already touched on this, but I know what I would do. I would make a uh, humanoid. Well, it's going to be like an interbreeding of like humans and a Xenos underwater species. So it's like kind of like, uh, uh, not mermaids, more like, um, what are those things called? Swamp monsters? Yeah, something like that. So like they use like the algae and like the depths of their world to create like pressure bombs and stuff like aquatic, so like tridents. And all that kind like of stuff. the merfolk from Magic the Gathering, right? Kind of like that. They look awesome, and they have some really cool um, planeswalkers. Mm -hmm. uh, so those would be cool special characters. You have like coral suits and stuff like that. I don't know how well that'll do against like power swords and all that shit. But I mean, you can fluff it up, I guess. Right. They're electrical, electrically powered. No, because water and electricity would not go hand in hand. I don't know. Algae can, power, yeah. know, something like that. But I mean. GW, to my knowledge, has nothing that's like water centric, so that's something new. Yeah, that'd be really awesome. I would um, I would create a race of uh, traveling uh, nomads um, that weren't human to begin with. So they were a completely different race, um, and they would look like the they look big and bulky. I'm thinking of the um, Mass Effect. What are they? Krogan? I think that's what they're called. Yeah, Krogan. Yeah. Like that. Like, not exactly frog looking, but just like massive, like strong uh, individuals. Uh, but there's not that many of them because they're traveling and, and whatnot. Their home world was probably destroyed or something. Um, so, like, what would be their, their thing? Like, their theme? That they're like beasts. So, they're like as strong. Like, if you have a five man squad of Space Marine, which is standard. You would have a three-man team of these, uh, whatever they are, Krogan, I don't know. Um, but they're, they're, yeah, they'll be like beasts. They would be able to take on a Centurion in close combat. Um, I guess the only trick would be finding a way to get them into close combat quickly. Right. Because that's really what all close combat armies in Warhammer 40k lack. If you're close combat, odds are you can't get into combat fast enough. Your shooters will tear you apart or if you are fast and close combat orientated usually you have like a low toughness or like a horrible save like speed bikes or like bikes with orcs and wraiths since they have like a weak save or something like that yeah, or your initiative sucks yeah <laughs> why gw why do you do this to us Cause then everybody will use it and it'll be op <laughs> Uh, but yeah, though that would be that would, those would be our two races. Also, bring back the squats. Yeah, the, the demiurge, demurge. Demurge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next question. That was a good one. Nice, nice question. Thank you. Uh, the Mister Green Eyes Monster. He says, "Blood for the blood god, skull for the skull thrones, corn for the cornflakes." Yum. I haven't had cornflakes in a long time. Uh, I need mine with sugar. As <laughs> <laughs> uh, Garo Hammer. Can you guys make a ranking of most numerous races of 40k? He said number one Nids, number two Orcs, number three Necrons. Um, I mean, you, you're kind of right. I feel like there's more Orcs than Tyranids. Yeah. Um, I would say Orcs, Necrons. Because there's a bunch that are still sleeping in the tomb world. We're going to count the ones that are still sleeping. Yeah. And then it's... Um, Not the Tau. No, humans? I would say humans. Mm, you think there's more humans than Tyranids? I think so. Like, there's... In the entire universe, there might be more Tyranids. But I think in the galaxy... Right, yeah. There's not... Because it's only like a small portion of the... What's it called? The High Fleet Tentacle? Yeah. Tendrils. Tendrils. But then I guess you could always make the argument that one Tyranid can be this... Or can be... What is it called? Liquefied. Liquefied or whatever, and spit out a bunch of, um, what are those little... Termodons. Ripper yeah. swarms. Ripper swarms. Mm -hmm. But that's cheating. <laughs> Fuck you. So I would say orcs, necrons, humans, then tyranids, and then, uh, tau. Well, and then... Do you think Eldar. there's more tau than, like... Eldar, yeah. 
Well, yeah, yeah, because Eldar is a dying race, so yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Oh, and then chaos, but chaos would be thrown in with humans. Humans, yeah. So I guess it would be demons. Yeah. And demons are like. Well, demons are the same thing as the Tyranids. You, they're in the war. Right. So. You can kill them, but they're just gonna keep on coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So yeah, th that would be the ranking. Mm-hmm. Sigbin Tinape. So, which Primark do you guys think is most likely to return? Uh, Primarchs that aren't confirmed killed, just missing in action. Or do you think that GW will never bring back any Primarchs and the Emperor is really in stasis? I thought that that was just propaganda and that they are just preserving a corpse. Well, uh, if GW were to bring back a Primark, which Primark do you think it would be? Just one? Yeah. Probably Vulcan. Vulcan? Yeah, because everybody seems to like him, especially in the comments. You guys just love him. Yeah. Uh, I would say Sang or not Sanguinius. Um, Sanguinius is gone. He's gone. It's the one that's uh, sleeping right now. What's his name? Gilliman. Gilliman? Yeah, I would say Gilliman. Uh, but now that I think about it, Vulcan does sound like a better answer. Because um, Vulcan is for the people. Yeah. Now, um, I mean, if you do bring back Gilliman, though, like on that aspect, mm -hmm. like he would probably just try to be the next emperor. Because he did, like, make his own Imperium. He did write the new Codex. So. And all um, second founding chapters, all su successor, successor chapters, chapters are pretty much stemming from the Ultramarines. Right. And regardless of how far back you are from a su successor chapter, your Primarch, you still hold, like, loyalty to the Primarch. So Gilliman would be up there. Right. Um, now, will GW bring him back? What do you think? That's a crazy like out there thing because I don't know because they are bringing back from what the rumors suggest they're bringing back the demon primarchs yeah so um, somebody has to battle them because right now with the Imperium like who's their best bet against them you know well, I mean I guess the Saints maybe right like and Drago if he comes out of his warp yeah Drago and um, like the Legion of the Dam because technically they are what demons are whereas like a sorcerer can bring demons from the warp. Um, I think Drago and the Legion of the Dam can just appear from the warp. But mm -hmm. that's about it. Right. They don't. They're very scarce. Right, and they can't take on. How many demon primarchs are there? There's Fulgrim, there's... Mortarion, Perturabo, Engron. Uh, Alpharius. Is he? He's a demon primarch. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. That's five. Yeah, but which one do you think they're going to bring back? I don't think they'll bring all of them back. No. Who's the most popular Chaos um, army? Or what is the most popular Chaos army? I don't know. Because I think Korn right away, right? So, so probably Angron. Angron. Yeah, yeah. bringing back Angron. Angron versus Vulcan would be pretty dope. Who killed Vulcan? Nobody. He, he ran who? away. Well, who killed him the first time? The first time... Was uh... it Fulgrim? No, because Fulgrim killed Ferris. Fulgrim killed a lot of people. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> um, I well. Oh, it was the Night Lord. The yeah. Night Lord, a Conrad Kurz. He yeah. like captured him, and he like kept on killing him over and over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Kurz, but I don't think he's a demon because he was confirmed dead from like an assassin. Um, but there's rumors that he wanted to die, and there's rumors that he didn't die. That he just faked his death. So who knows? GW has to progress the story. So. We'll see who they come out with. Yeah, but definitely I want to see Vulcan. Vulcan. Fulgrim, the Phenocian Primarch of the Third Legion. <laughs> we were just talking about you, man. There's no way those stupid Tau can be something against orcs. But who knows? Can do something against, against orcs. Yeah, who knows? Because, like, who knows what technology the Tau can create? Right. Braddon Elder. Tyranids versus aliens, or Tyranids versus predators, who wins? And what if the warp became sentient? What would the new warp god of chaos be more powerful than the other gods of chaos? Uh, so you got like four, yeah. four questions right there. Tyranids versus aliens. My money's on the Tyranids, what yeah. about you? Tyranids. As cool, as badass as the aliens are, they can't like liquefy and adapt. And what's that movie uh, that talks about the origins of the aliens? Uh, Prometheus? Yeah, and they're saying that they, it's a, it's really a biological warfare. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's what I would, I would say. It's, it's cause I don't think they're as numerous as the Tyranids. The Tyranids have evolved to 
uh, fend themselves. What about right. Tyranids versus Predators? Predators were built to kill these uh, aliens, but I don't think they could handle... No, not Tyranids. Not goop like them. <laughs> right. Um, and what if the war became sentient? Would it destroy the other Chaos Gods? More they like me. Yeah, because they feed off of the war and whatnot. Like, yeah. They're, they're, they need the warp. Yeah, it would be a warp god that encompasses all emotions, though. Mm -hmm. Which would be interesting. Because it would be human, wouldn't it be? In a way, yeah. So it would be the Emperor. Oh! Heresy. <laughs> Elias de Leon. If, you're Tau pl if you are a Tau player, how do you completely leave out the crew? Easy, I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're too different to the Tau. Like their physiology, their, like what they are. Like I'm more into like battle suits and technology and they're like the opposite. So uh, in gameplay wise, how do you do it so that you don't get hurt by not bringing in crew? Uh, battle suits, I guess, I usually tend to equip them with flamers, so if I do get charged, I at least get that, uh, uh the overwatch thing, uh, I forgot what it's called, I think like Tower of Flame or something, that gives me D3 hits, so if I do get charged, I at least have that, and Farsight helps too. Okay. Gage Lesto, he says, where's he at? And you need to respond to this. Did you know that the God Emperor is feeding Nurgle? Yep. Yeah, he talked about it before. Yeah, we talked about it here and in the Nurgle video. Yeah. It's crazy, but it's the truth. Right. Karo Meister? Meister? Not a chance. The Imperium of Man didn't even eradicate the orcs, even when the Emperor still walked among them on the height of the Crusade. If God School will invade the Tau Empire, the orcs will be overwhelmed. Or the orcs the will overwhelm. Right. Yeah, will overwhelm. Yes, they'll be overwhelmed then. Uh, in a green tide, the orcs is the most numerous civilized Xenos race, second to the Tyranids. And the Imperium of, of Man ranked in third. Uh, yeah, like I. My money is with the. With the Tau or with the orcs, but. Who knows? Right. Hayden and Robbie. I can't believe I messed up the wording of the first half of my question query. Curse you, half asleep, drunk self, shackles, or shakes fist at self. Yes. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Lee Brunish. My first battle was Elgar versus the Space Wolves. How'd you do? Richard Veld's Rasmussen. Nah, I don't think Tau could if the Imperium of Jabus with gold armor couldn't do it in the 30k. How can the blue dudes do it? Yep. Nadat Banks. He says, 40k theories did say that it was possible that the original Warhammer fantasy could take place on a human world in 40k that hasn't been discovered by the Imperium. But the Age of Sigmar kind of screwed that up. By the way, people at my GW actually call the Eternals Sigmarines. It's officially their name. <laughs> Terror Blades, if you could return the squats, would you do it in a heartbeat? Yes. yes. Roberto71. In Germany, you must not play with unpainted units in GW stores. I think that's the same uh, in regular GW stores, no? Right, it's like you have to. It's, it's basically saying you gotta buy their paints and have their items and all that. It's hard to paint, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. DJ Evans Creation. The Tau cannot. The Ad Mech sent out a pro beyond the Halo Zone. Even millions, millions light years away, they were getting orc transmissions. Even still, yeah. Basically, the orcs are vast and they can keep the tau. Yep. Gage Leston. Oh my God, you pronounced my name wrong. Says Gage Lesto. Um, what did I? I keep saying Leston. Is it? It's Lesto. Lesto. Right. Sorry. <laughs> Fikrit Kamuruku. First of all, God bless you. Do you read the Warhammer 40k books? Not really. Uh, I've been reading The Beast, but I haven't finished it. If yes, then which book have you read? The Beast? The, the Beast, yeah. I've read just the backs of those books. Because <laughs> it's hard finding the time when you gotta paint and build armies and all that. Yeah. Right. Um, so I do want to read them, just need to find the time. Yep. Blood Prince, Gear Heart. I know my 40k lore pretty well. So, just wondering, who is more evil? The Night Lords or the Dark Eldar? 
I personally think that the Dark Eldar are more evil. Also, I enjoy your content. Keep it up. Thank you. Uh, definitely Dark Eldar. Yeah, the Night Lords, they're some like grimy mofos because they're like the murderers and like jailed people from, I believe it was uh, Nostromo was the planet. So yeah, they're like bad guys, but the Dark Eldar do it because they love it. So Yeah, like there is no god that they pray to. They're not doing that because they get like superpowers. All they're doing is like Inflict living in excess. Right. And they are like inflicting pain because they like they like to do it. Mm -hmm. They feed off of that. That's that's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> And those were the questions for this week, I believe. Thank you so much for leaving them. Be sure to leave more so we can answer them next Monday. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Yeah. As always, I am the Sound Alchemist here with... Gershwan. And we are signing out.